Hi everyone, my name is Gabrielle Legovichute. I'm a medical student at Queen's University in Canada and a lead of Why We Swab. And today I'm presenting about Why We Swab, elaborate stories, and stem cell donation. I have no disclosures to report. Allogeneic stem cell transplantation is a potentially curative therapy option for patients with a range of blood, immune, and metabolic disease. However, about 70% of patients lack a matching donor in their family and must turn to alternatives such as an unrelated donor. Unrelated donors remain the preferred and most common alternative donor source if no fully matched family donor is found. Donor registries that work to recruit unrelated donors at stem cell drives face several challenges. These include recruitment of donors from the most needed demographics, which are individuals that are young, male, and from diverse ancestral backgrounds. Young donors are associated with increased recipient survival and male donors are felt to be associated with a reduced risk of chronic graft versus host disease in recipients. Recruitment of donors from diverse ancestral backgrounds is needed to address disparities in access to matched and related donors, as patients from diverse ancestral groups are much less likely to find a matched and related donor to import to smaller donor pools and poor representation on individual registries worldwide. As well, donor attrition is a challenge that donor registries in Canada and around the world face. This occurs when individuals who are identified as potential matches for patients do not follow through a donation. In Canada, roughly 40% of contacted donors drop out before donation, and attrition is higher amongst non-white potential donors. One way to mitigate these challenges is through utilizing storytelling as a tool to convey information. Stories are powerful in their ability to disseminate information in a meaningful way through engaging the reader's emotions and thoughts. Strengths of storytelling include the naturalness of information transmission and that the information within is often easier for learners to process, retrieve, and synthesize. Stories have the potential to create interest and support engagement and understanding. Therefore, we hypothesize of a stem cell donation story library to support donor recruitment and education. In February of 2019, we demonstrated a need for a library of stories in stem cell donation for perspectives of three groups of Canadian stakeholders in stem cell donation. This included newly registered donors, donor recruiters, and potential storytellers. The majority of donor recruiters agreed that the story library will help raise awareness about stem cell donation, educate potential donors, and recruit the most needed donors. And newly registered donors who were shown example stories following registration agreed that if they were shown these stories ahead of time, they may have been more willing to register. The stories help them understand some donation and the need for ethically diverse donors, and majority would be interested in reading future stories. Ten potential storytellers, including stem cell recipients, donors, and caregivers, provide written feedback demonstrating unanimous support for the development of a story library. One potential storyteller shared, quote, the stories not only detail our journey to health, they also allow us the opportunity to tell of the heroes that donated their cells. Wabi Swab was launched on World Marrow Donor Day on September 21st, 2019. To report stories about Canadian cells donors and recipients, patients searching for a match, family members, and transplant staff. The stories are directed at an audience of potential stem cell donors, told on the first person narrative, and published alongside the storyteller's photo or video. Social media was chosen as the principal platform for the library to ensure the stories were easily accessible and shareable, and to support efforts to connect with younger potential donors. A committee of donor recruiters and transplant physicians was formed to develop a use one, find and interview storytellers, and create and publish stories across social media. The story development process involves identifying and interviewing the storyteller and securing their informed consent, transcribing the interview and preparing a story draft that is then reviewed by the Wide Swap Committee, and obtaining a final approval from the storyteller before publishing the story online across social media channels. <laughs> As of May 2022, 28 story arcs and 198 social media posts were published online, featuring 45 storytellers from a range of ethnicities, which includes 21 patients and stem cell recipients, 14 donors, and 10 family members. For example, Daniel's story on the bottom right highlights a donor overcoming mental health issues to donate, and Ian, bottom left, touches upon how special it feels to be chosen as a match. Daniel said, and I quote, I was in the period of intense distress in my life. I was actually going to see a psychologist for cognitive behavioral therapy, and I was on medication for anxiety. I was dealing with both a generalized anxiety disorder and a panic disorder. These are things that were just really stressful. On the other hand, this was a unique opportunity for me, and not only to help someone, but to really evaluate my own priorities in life, to 
to see how much I'm willing to call myself or how much I'm willing to challenge myself to try and overcome these struggles. Ian is now a donor whose story we feel is particularly engaging to young men. He shares that he was telling his friends about being a stem cell donor and they said, holy sh, you're actually doing that. This is just one example of the ways that our stories engage young men to register as donors. Patient and recipient stories touch upon the unique journey that patients looking for a match and stem cell recipients go through. While we swap seats to adjust the need for more diverse individuals to sign up as donors, we currently have 15 diverse storytellers who share their story with us. Dorothy, far left, shares how difficult it is to find a match, and that ultimately she received the transplant from her sister, who was a half match. Dorothy is now six years post transplant, doing well, and advocates to increase the representation of Black peoples on the registry. Ali, from the far right, was a donor recruiter of mixed race ancestry who was then diagnosed with ALL. Fortunately, he did well with chemotherapy alone and was returned to his previous work as a recruiter, advocating for stem cell donation. Elise shared, quote, that at first I was just kind of volunteering at stem cell drives as something to put on a resume. But then after my diagnosis, I was just determined to get the whole world to sign up. In Canada, there's a special need to engage Indigenous peoples as donors, as they have an ancestral heritage that is unique to North America. Wabi Swap has featured multiple stories from Indigenous storytellers. And Joel, from the far left, received the stem cell transplant in 2018 as part of his treatment for leukemia. He reflects about the impact a nation has not only on a patient, but their family, and encourages other Indigenous people to sign up. Miranda, on the bottom right, she is so challenging it was to find a match for their seven year old son Tanner with sideroblastic like anemia. Miranda Bella did not work in foundation to support Indigenous peoples to register as stem cell donors. We also share stories from recipients and their donor. Shown here are Joel and his donor Nikolai, Hyungup and his donor Piotr, and Ollie and his donor and sister Abby. Abby shared, quote, it's so special to know that you're helping somebody and you're saving somebody's life. And I want everyone to know that it's not that painful. If an 11 year old can do it, you can do it too. Additionally, some stories feature unique storytelling mediums, such as letters written from a donor or stem cell recipient, and videos made by donors and patients. Following the launch in September of 2019, we evaluated stakeholder perspective on why we swap. Majority of donor recruiters reported that they had used or will use the stories as part of their recruitment efforts. Those stories help raise awareness and recruit the most needed donors. Newly registered donors were showing example stories at the time of registration, and majority agreed that the stories helped them understand subsidization and convinced them to register. Storytellers that have shared their story with Wabi Swab agreed that the stories helped raise awareness, educates others, and supports donor recruitment. Also, we set out to assess the impact of Wabi Swab stories on potential donors' knowledge and attitudes towards donation. To do this, we recruited a cohort of 33 potential donors in Canada from nine non-European ancestry groups and surveyed them before and after they were shown a series of Wabi Swab stories. Surveys include a modified Simmons ambulance scale, which is a valid questionnaire to assess ambivalence towards donation. After reading the stories, participants' mean total scores on a donation knowledge has improved from 64% to 85%. Additionally, participants' self-rated knowledge about Simmons donation increased with 67% reporting knowing at least a moderate amount after reading the stories compared with 9% before. Participants mean Simon's and Millane's scale scores decreased from 3.85 to 2.7, and they were more likely to agree that they would sign up as a donor. With significantly more potential donors reporting that they would not need to think over whether to donate, that they did not have doubts about registering, and they did not think, uh, feel unsure about donating. The majority felt the stories positively impacted on their decisions to register and would help them talk about donation with friends and family. Since launch in 2019, story posts published to the Wabi Swap Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter social media channels reached an audience of over 100,000 people and secured over 32,000 engagements, which are likes, comments, shares, and link clicks across all platforms. While we swap stories were published in 18 print and broadcast media outlets, stories were also highlighted by major medical organizations, such as Canadian Blood Services, Association for the Advancement of Blood and Biotherapies, and Canadian Donation and Transplantation Research Program. 
To assess the impact of the story library and donor recruitment, we compared outcomes on the Canadian Donor Recruitment Organization Stem Cell Club prior to and after the launch of YU Swab. Stem Cell Club is frequently reposted YU Swab posts across our channels. In the five months post launch of YU Swab, the total number of donors recruited by Stem Cell Club increased to 2,810 from 2,445 in the same period the year prior. Recruitment of the most needed donors improved as well, with the proportion of males from non European and social groups increasing from 61 to 68%. Our future directions include continuing to share additional uh, stories from diverse demographic groups that are underrepresented on donor registries to increase access for ancestrally diverse patients searching for a match. Stories can also be told and retold to advance recruitment goals, translate into different languages, and adapt to the perspective style and context to meet the needs of a specific racial, ethnic, and geographic context. One such way is using stories to develop recruitment campaigns using why we saw the storytellers. As presented at this symposium, my colleagues Sylvia, Lauren, Farnes, and RuPaul will be presenting on specific campaigns that use why we saw stories already such as the Black Donors Save Lives, East Asian Save Lives, Iranian Donors Save Lives, and South Asian Save Lives campaigns. We have additional such campaigns in development, including one highlighting the need for Indigenous peoples as donors. We will also develop campaigns focused around cultural holidays and events. For example, sharing short stories of mothers and by the best donation during Mother's Day, and sharing donor recipients exchanging letters during the holiday season, which goes along the holiday theme of gift giving. The results of our survey of potential donors from needed demographic groups show that the majority of felt stories will help them talk about the nation with their friends and family, and that they would share the stories with others in their community. Prior to survey-based analysis of potential donors from the U.S. National Marrow Donor Program and Anthony Nolan of the United Kingdom have shown that compared to white people, registrants from diverse racial and ethnic groups had stronger family cohesion, but were less likely to receive parental support for the nation and some groups may be even be discouraged from donating. Our future work will highlight why we swap a story impact on potential donors, family members, attitudes towards donation, and focus groups reading a series of stories. We hypothesize that sharing stories with elders and parents of potential stem cell donors would support recruitment of youth in the family. In addition, why we support why we swap supports a network of storytellers who are passionate about donor recruitment and who can be approached to develop other multimedia content to support recruitment efforts, such as video interviews. A series of videos created by Wildswap Storytellers for a World Marrow Donor Day campaign received international recognition by the World Marrow Donor Association and won the 2021 Incentive Prize for our work. In conclusion, Wabi Swab report stories for ancestral diverse storytellers impacted by stem cell donation. The library was developed to meet a need identified by stakeholders in the stem cell donor recruitment. Evaluation post launch showed that the library achieved outstanding media impact. Its stories improved the knowledge and attitudes towards donation of eligible potential donors from needed demographic groups. The library was also valued by stakeholders in donor recruitment, and its use was associated with improved donor recruitment outcomes. Together, these results show that the Wiley Swab stories support the education and recruitment of committed subset donors, and our work is relevant to donor registries worldwide. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge and thank all the individuals on this page for their contribution to the development of Wiley Swab, particularly Dr. Warren Fink for mentorship as a supervisor and founder and director of Simsel Club, as well as the Wiley Swab Committee for their hard work and education to develop these stories. Canadian Blood Services for their continued support. And finally, all storytellers who have shared their stories and feedback with us. Thank you very much for listening.